Hello everybody, welcome to Comics Class. My name is Brandon Pallas, and I'm here to teach you everything I know about uh, the art of drawing comics. Um, and today, uh, we're going to do the hands. So, um, hope everybody's ready. This is a pretty tough subject, um, and uh, we won't be able to go really in-depth today because, you know, it's just one, it's just about an hour, and uh, the hands are... You know, you could study the hands for a long time, but I'll give you uh, the basics and I'll give you some tricks that uh, that I like to use and uh, hopefully it'll help. Um, before we do that, we'll go ahead and get into warm-ups. So uh, everybody who wants to draw along, uh, you know, on your stream, go ahead and get your stream up. And uh, here we go. Let's start with um, just a little bit of just basic C curves. We won't do much of these at all because we got something else I want to do. Um, but, you know, super important. Always, always want to do a little bit of this. So let's just get them going different directions. Left, right, up, down. Tighter curves, longer curves. Make them like radiate out from a central point. Make them radiate. No, not radiate. What's the opposite of radiate? Make them kind of curl in toward a central curve or central point. This is all good stuff to practice. All right. And that'll do for that. Let's get some uh, S curves. And again, just, you know, every go every, every direction, uh, up, down, left, right, vertical, horizontal, tighter, more exaggerated curves, longer, sort of stretched out, graceful curves, all of this stuff. Some of these that I'm doing here are becoming like double C curves. It's all right. No, it's not that all right. If you're trying to draw S curves, we should be drawing S curves. But that's a, that sort of thing like that. That's a nice curve as well. Like we can put that to, to use. Anyway, just a few more of these and then we'll move on to kind of a compound curve exercise that's going to be important today. All right, and that'll be it. Um, so now what I want you guys to do is I want you to do a double C curve like this. And just do a bunch of those. And go different directions. Try to avoid like I did here, letting it like turn into kind of a, a lump. Make sure there's a little bit of a point so it really is a double C curve rather than turning into kind of a, just a zigzaggy line. And now stretch it out, make it long. But, but enough that it still has a, a recognizably C curve kind of quality to it. Now put a put a bend in it so that rather than being kind of the same curve, you know, at the same angle twice, now we have it going kind of kind of angling, kind of bending.
All right, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm looking at everybody else's stuff. Everybody uh, looks to be doing pretty good. Um, all righty, let's, uh, now let's do same thing, but instead of a double C curve, we're gonna do a C curve followed by an S curve. And we can, we can go kind of extreme with this, like make these real curvy curves, or we can just be kind of long and, and graceful with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, like we're going to be ultimately, as we get better and better at these lines and better in thinking um, in these lines, we're going to be kind of putting them together in uh, in all different kinds of ways. Like when I'm when I'm inking a picture, um, as I'm kind of going through, I'm just kind of looking at my pencils and just sort of determining what kinds of lines there are and just like executing like C curve, S curve, C curve, S curve. Um, and just uh, just breaking it down into those little constituent lines. Now that I'm talking, I'm kind of just doing random lines. So let me get back to what we're supposed to be doing here. We can also go S curve, C curve. That's a little bit of a different uh, different motion for our hand. So that's good to work on too. You can even change the direction. See that the both of these, they start with the same S curve, but the C curve comes off at a different uh, to the other side. So Cool stuff. All right, so that'll be enough of that. Now we're gonna do the part that's really relevant today, which is, uh, let's start with that double C curve, and then let's go on the other side and put a long S curve. Anybody want to hazard a guess as to why this is relevant today? It's, oh, it's a finger, isn't it? It is. It is. This is, uh, this is my little trick for drawing fingers most of the time. It's just a little double C curve and an S curve. Or sometimes... Sometimes, what was that, Kana? Or it's a very skinny bat wing. Yes. Hey, you know, that's, uh, I mean, that's actually, uh, wings uh, are all, all, wings of all kinds uh, are these little arrangements of C curves and S curves. I mean, so many things. Almost, like I've said before, virtually everything breaks down into C curves, S curves, and straight lines. Um, so you master these lines, really like, uh, just get really familiar with them, really get them in your muscle memory. And they will serve you really well. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, you can go ahead. Not just the not just the double C curve, but you can get that S curve in there as well. Um, you know, that's kind of a. This is a stylized finger. Um, people don't necessarily actually look like this, but this is a comics class. It's a cartooning class, so uh, stylization is is good for us. Um, but yeah, just get used to doing this little. Uh, little construction, just one, two, three. Try to make it touch uh, at the tip. You, you know, you can, uh, if it doesn't, you can always kind of go back in and and connect it. But um, yeah, this, this is kind of my basic pattern for fingers, like a huge percentage of the time. Obviously not every single angle, not every single pose is gonna work. Um, but when the fingers are kind of extended 
it's usually sort of a, a variation on this. So let's just spend a little bit more time uh, doing that, just really getting getting this. Uh, this is also like, a, check this out, okay, it's kind of like a, a knife blade. You know, there's there's a lot of different things you can do with this kind of um, with this kind of uh, pattern of lines, but yeah, for today it's going to be a finger. And uh, you know, experiment with with some different widths, different uh, angles. Maybe make it curve a little more at the tip so that it's not coming to like a real pointy finger. You can also double back from the end rather than starting from the beginning. But it's always just that, you know, those C curves and that S curve. Or, you know, like I said, sometimes uh, the finger, especially like if there's a a nail on the end of it, like a long nail. I like to let that kind of ride into this like long S curve and then bring the nail back like that. So I'll just give you guys a little bit more time to do that. And then we'll move on to one more exercise before we jump into really studying the hand. Sometimes the finger really curls and we can't we can't kind of stylize it to those two segments because obviously there's another joint right there. Um, so, so for instance, like over here, if the finger is really curved curled up, we can't just use those uh, those two segments. So we'll do like three, but it's always look at this right there: C curve, S curve, C curve. These are C curves. So, yeah, well, that's probably good there. Last thing I want to do is just just do some uh, do some blocks and some cylinders. So we haven't covered perspective. Um, as I go along, I think maybe I should have uh, should have started this this whole series, the whole comics class thing out with a little bit more uh, fundamental perspective and and form drawing. But you know, it's all right. We wanted to do anatomy and figure drawing and stuff so um, well you know most of you guys I think have these basics down uh, so we'll um, we'll get to this later on I'll cover everything eventually hopefully so just give us some uh, some like flat sort of flattened cubes some blocks and and put a little uh Go ahead and put a little bit of a curve to them. You know, give them a little bit of a swing. And this is a great exercise. I, I used to do tons and tons of this, just drawing blocks, just different sizes, different shapes, you know, they don't all have to be uh, these sort of flat blocks, although for uh, for our purposes today, this is the sort of thing that's going to be valuable. But, you know, if you can just do, just do hundreds or, or thousands, you know, not all at once, but, you know, do a couple of dozen a day uh, and just make it a habit and, um, you know, you'll you'll really build up those muscles for sort of just understanding this form intuitively. All right. That ought to do. So let's do that. Let's uh, move on from that. And now we'll just do some cylinders. And you can make these cylinders curve a little bit as well. Make sure that uh, the minor axis so if we have any lips that stands for the uh, the end of the cylinder, the minor axis is the the part that goes through the narrow or through the um, 
through the, the side essentially, not through the long way, but through the short way. And make sure that is kind of going straight into that tube. When we draw our cylinder, we don't want we don't want this. We don't want this. You know, unless unless we're drawing a, a cylinder that does have sort of a some sort of an angled end. If it's a basic flat end, we want to make sure that uh, it lines up right. And you can put a couple of cylinders sort of almost connected to each other, or even a few. And this will obviously stand for the, uh, the different segments of the finger. And just a few more. I'm going to draw some real curvy ones here. And that probably ought to do it. And we will go ahead and move on to drawing the hand itself. So as almost always, I'm just going to run through this mannequin one more time. So hips at halfway. Well, first of all, a nice long vertical line to stand for the whole figure. Hips halfway, go up from there. Shoulders two-thirds of the way. Head fills two-thirds of that space above the shoulders. Put in some mass for the torso. Hips halfway. Legs are going to come down from that uh, hip line. Knees halfway feet, etc. Arms are going to hang down, elbow at the waist, wrist at the hip line, and then the hands, the reason we're here today, will extend with the wrist right at that hip line, right at the, the greater trochanter of the thigh where the, uh, where the femur sticks out from the hip bone. Um, the wrist is going to land right there, and then the hand is going to extend down to right about mid-thigh. I just feel like it's important, you know, we obviously we all know where the hand is, but I think it's important to take a, a moment to kind of contextualize all of this stuff so we all have a, a sense of where it really fits in. So that's all that's all we need. We don't we don't need to go into detail on the mannequin there, but there's where your hands go. Wrist at the way at the hips. Uh, hand extends about halfway down the down to to the mid thigh. Um, now I will recap really quickly the uh, the forearm. So I'll just kind of block in an arm real quick. Um, we know we've got the deltoid. We know we've got like the bicep, the triceps there. We've got these sort of masses of muscle, um, the extensors and the flexors. So we get this bulbous kind of form up here. But then what happens is as the uh, forearm runs toward the uh, toward the wrist, so it's all kind of like a bowling pin up here, uh, rounded. But as it runs toward the wrist, it's going to turn squarish or rectangular. Um, and uh, the actual like wrist itself is basically it's it's a rectangular sort of end, right? And then right on the outside here, we got a little knob of bone. This is all going to be important to where how the hand attaches. Um, so just a quick uh, recap of that. And um, I'll go ahead and throw a hand on here. First thing we want to do, a little uh, flattened block. The way we, uh, the same way we were just doing the blocks in the, uh, in the warm-up. And it's going to extend... On the inside here, the thumb side, it's going to extend a little bit past the uh, past the wrist. There's going to be kind of like a little bump here, um, and there's also going to be a little kind of triangular 
shape that hangs off the side. And that's the uh, pad of the thumb. Um, now I'm not going to continue with this hand. I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, how it attaches to the wrist there. And then we'll move on over here. Here's a wrist. Here's the uh, bone, the, the bony bit of the outside. So I'll, I'll put this block. And like I said, on the inside, it, it comes in a little right there. Um, and it's going to be, let's see, it's a little longer than square, typically. Um, and we're going to have, you know, this is, there's a, uh, Bones, kind of for each finger, there's one bone that, that comes out from the wrist and goes to where that finger starts. And they kind of radiate out a little bit. So there's the index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. And uh, the, the index finger, we, most of us probably know this, the index finger is the longest. Um, no, not the index finger, I'm sorry. The middle finger is the longest. Um, and in addition, the uh, for the palm of the hand, the, the middle finger the, of the, um, you know, I don't know what those bones are called, the, the tarsal the carpals or the metacarpals, first metacarpal, something like that. The, the bone that makes up the palm, the middle finger part is going to be uh, the longest. And so we're going to have it like a little bit of a curve and it's going to peak at the middle finger. And then as the fingers extend, it's going to be the same thing again. The um, the middle finger is going to be the longest. Index finger and uh, ring finger are going to be uh, about the same. I think uh, I think there's some some variation among people here as to whether the uh, index or ring finger is longer. Um, looks like my ring finger is very slightly longer. I'm not sure if that's uh, the case for everybody. Um, Pinky is obviously the shortest by far. And so all of these uh, all of these fingers are going to kind of mirror the uh, the shape of this uh, palm area. or um, well, this is the back of the hand really that I'm drawing here, not the palm, but you know, um, So let me just go ahead and do another one, throw in a wrist. This will be the other hand. Um, there's the bone. We're going to have uh, the middle finger bit extending the furthest, so I can just kind of put a little lump there. And then the fingers themselves are going to be about the same length again as that palm area. Um, knuckles back here. And then the, uh, the first uh, joint of the finger. Um, is going to be about halfway. Um, last joint is going to be um, about that uh, little more than halfway, a little less than one third kind of proportion that we see a lot. So that's the fingers. I often just uh, do some C curves there like that, put in like one side of it and then kind of fill in the other side. Um, there's going to be, you know, you got your knuckles here. There's going to be a little bit of a web between the fingers. Let me start a somewhat bigger and more clear drawing here. So back of the hand, um, wrist, wrist bone right there, inside edge, uh, thumb edge, kind of coming out to the uh, to the inside a little bit. Um, the knuckles will kind of be like right there. Uh, when the fist is closed or the the fingers are bent inward, you'll see the knuckles popping up. But when the when the hand is spread out, uh, the knuckles will kind of disappear, and you'll instead get these like tendons popping up. Um, but in any case, uh, so fingers kind of radiate out. Second joint, like right there. Then of course you got the you got the nails. 
and then there will be some web in between the fingers here. When we look at the hand from the palmer side, it's going to make the palm look um, look longer because we aren't going to see this kind of sunken area here between the fingers. We're going to see just those webs. Um, all right, so now over here, we've got this uh, block of the thumb extending off to the side. And this is a, this tends to be um, a little bit like if this is a block, this, this block here, it tends to come down at an angle somewhat. So that uh, is going to come to something like uh, halfway up the, up the, the palm area of the hand. And then the thumb itself is going to be another couple of little C curves and usually an S curve right there. That probably should be a little bit, yeah, a little bit more like that. Um, so that's the back of the hand. Uh, hope that uh, hope that's making sense. Uh, you guys can feel free to ask questions if you have any questions. Um, let's go ahead and go to the palm side. So um, same difference really, or same uh, same deal. We got this squarish uh, bit that kind of curves and peaks at the middle finger area there. Um, we've got the inner like thumb area coming a little bit, you know, off to the inside. But now we're going to have to draw the masses of the palm. So I'll put that first uh, joint of the thumb and it's going to have this sort of a chicken drumstick sort of shape coming uh, toward the center of the palm. By the way, we've also got these tendons coming down here for the uh, for the flexors. All of the muscles that, well, most of the muscles that animate the fingers and the hand are actually in the forearm. There, there are small muscles uh, in between the bones here and stuff, but um, most of these muscles are actually all up in here in the forearm and then there's just this kind of like system of pulleys that extends up into the hand. Um, so we don't have a lot of muscle in the hand. It's it's mostly bone and, and ligament and, and whatnot. So we got these ligaments there. Um, there's also, you know, a little bit of a flap that comes up this way. Um, that's that web between the thumb and the, and the hand. I'll go ahead and do the thumb here and remember these are you know this is these are cylinders more or less I'm treating them as like graphic shapes almost just with these lines but remember that there's there's always like uh, depth and, and roundness to it so there's the uh, the thumb now the uh, the outside the uh, the heel of the hand is going to be another kind of Kind of a chicken drumsticky kind of shape um, and then inside here is kind of just like a, a bit of a hollow um, and you'll have different lines running through the hand everybody's different that's why palm reading is a thing because um, everybody's got this different uh, arrangement of lines that some people might believe can tell you something about your future um, in any case uh, okay so like I said here, back here, you know, the knuckles are right there. So like the knuckles would be on the back side, maybe about right there, but we've got that web extending up. So it's going to make the palm look longer. Um, usually we'll see sort of like a lazy letter B shape. Um, kind of coming across, that's those pads at the, at the base of the fingers. Uh, that especially when you start to curl your hand. It'll start to bend, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll start to like crease and fold, like right around there. And then the fingers themselves are kind of just that same construction. C-curve, maybe another C-curve or S-curve, depending. Sometimes I like to... Can you measure how long the fingers are compared to the hand, the palm, the palm of the hand? Uh, can you measure it or do I measure it? 
Yeah. Um, yeah, um, they're, the fingers are just about the same length as the palm. In fact, they're just about... So, I, I pointed out how the palm has this kind of shape where, you know, the middle finger is the longest, and then it tapers on either side, right? Uh, so the pinky side of the palm is like the shortest. And then each finger is going to be just about the same length of its corresponding palm area again. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So um, it's kind of it's it's kind of cool and kind of a kind of an elegant uh, little system there, where you know. So let, let me go ahead and drag out a, a ruler. So like this area here is going to be about as long as this area here, and this area here is going to be about as long as that middle finger. Pinky area is going to be just about as long as the pinky. So, yeah, um, each finger is about as long as its corresponding section of the palm. And then just remember that the middle finger and the middle finger section of the palm is the longest. And then it tapers out from there. Index and ring finger about the same. Pinky is the shortest. Uh, we all know that. Um, so as for the fingers themselves... Uh, I'm going to try to draw this in a little more detail than just my typical uh, my typical C curve thing. You know, it's always cylindrical. Um, we've got these joints, these knuckles. We've got this uh, this uh, nail bed here. Um, like I said before, the the last two joints are going to be about equal to the length of that first joint. So the 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 major bend in the finger is going to be about halfway down, and then the second one, the uh, the, the last uh, bend, is going to be a little more than halfway. It's going to be so rather than being like one two halfway, or being like one third. It's going to be in that, like, right in the middle. I think it's about a 3 to 2 ratio, and we see this a lot in the body, and it's also just a good ratio in general to, to design things. It's, a, it's a, pleasing, a pleasing ratio, in my opinion. Um, so, let's see. Let's do the inside of the finger. That's the outside or the back side. And we'll do the inside. We're going to have that crease there. And uh, let's see, maybe we could see the nail bed sneaking around the side a little bit and we would get the uh, that other crease there. And um, these creases, you know, you can, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I often draw like kind of a little extended M or stretched out M, but you can just, you know, put some lines or, you know, little squiggle, whatever, kind of depending on your, uh, depending on your stylistic choices. All right. Um, let me see. Let me see. All right, let me talk a little bit more about the structure of the palm, because I really want to make sure that it's coming across, I'll put in a little bit of a wrist and forearm there, that it's coming across that the palm is really a, a block um, it does tend to curve a little, like, um, with the, you know, so that the palm itself, you know, the inner, inner portion of the palm kind of curves inward for grasping, and the back is kind of rounded. Um, excuse me. So there's the palm, and then the, uh, the thumb area. Now, this is not a good angle. Let me uh, let me do another angle. So this will be the palm, and then the thumb side is going to have like another sort of triangular block that has a like like a joint here, so that it can flex back and forth. So the Thumb could kind of come down this way, or let's see, 
it could be kind of fully extended out this way. And, uh, you know, as, as the thumb turn comes inward on the hand to kind of curl inward, it's going to, this mass is going to really bulge inward. It's going to turn into like this big, you know, like I said, it's like a, like a chicken drumstick kind of, kind of shape. But if it extends out, then that, uh, chicken drumstick shape is going to really like flatten out a lot. And uh, just real quick, I'll give you guys kind of the basic pattern of uh, of uh, folds of creases on the palm. Like I said, you, you've got this, this uh, shape of the thumb. You got this uh, shape of the heel of the hand, which doesn't have a crease exactly right there but it's got kind of a kind of a it sort of sinks into the the center of the palm where there's a bit of a hollow um there's this uh web of the thumb attaching uh kind of right below the fingers you can kind of see the the palm extend uh behind it a little bit and then we've got this uh I like to draw, like I said, like kind of a lazy, a lazy letter B right there. And then we can just put the fingers in. When I'm drawing the fingers, I like to just draw one line kind of for each finger, usually to represent like the back uh, side of the finger and then put in the, the, the mass of it after. So um, I think that's probably good for, for like an intro to the, uh, anatomy and structure of the hand. We'll go ahead and move on now to the uh, to the reference pictures, but uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to speak up. So let's go on to the reference. And uh, this is a lot, we probably won't get through all of these, but that's fine. Let's start out looking at this uh, skeleton hand. Um, now these bones, uh, these like the actual bones that we're looking at, uh, you can see this one. Uh -oh. Okay, I see what happened. Um, this one is not as long as the whole finger, but for the palm, we have to consider all of these muscles in here, or these uh, bones in here too. These uh, what are these called? I think those are the carpals. Um, which is why you have a carpal tunnel in which to have a syndrome. Um, so these are kind of part of the palm as well, and they take up some of that space. So if we were to measure from there to there, and then go like from there to there, that's about the same. Let's see. This might be easier to see. It's about the same distance. And if we go from there to there, and then move that, it's about the same distance. Um, and you know, you can just see the, uh, the breakdown of, of where these bones split up. Now, one thing is like this from, from here and here, this does look like it's about two thirds, um, to one third, but we have to consider that that's just the end of the bone and then the fleshy fingertip is going to extend a bit beyond that. So anyway. Let's move on and we'll just start drawing over some of these hands. So here's that uh, box of the wrist. Here's the bone that sticks onto the outside. The, not sticks on, this is the, um, this is the, uh, the large bone of the forearm, the uh, ulna, the same bo bone that runs right back to the, uh, to the elbow. Block of the, of the hand, it's gonna come out a little bit past here. There's kind of a, a joint like right there typically um, that triangular block for the thumb um, we can see how there's this sort of pattern where the pink the end uh, middle finger is the longest uh, 
the middle finger section of the palm is the longest, and then the middle finger itself. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how much just tracing out these fingers is going to help, but, um, at least on these, like, flat hand. Um, but you can see, you know, the, the, the wrinkles of the, uh, of those fingers. About halfway, about halfway, a little more than halfway, about a little less than two-thirds, or a little less than a third. All right, well, let's go over here to the this palm view. Here we got this whole, like, chicken drumstick, or, or maybe like a, like the leg and a thigh, I don't know. Um... You got this whole mass of the thumb. Here we got this, the heel of the hand. You can see those webs extending up. The knuckles, you can see there's this little bump right there. That's where the knuckles are. Um, if you look at your own hand, you can look at the back of your hand and see where the knuckle of your index finger is and kind of like trace that to the side of your hand and then turn it around and look at the other side and you'll see now there's this lump where the knuckle is, but the flesh of the palm really extends further up. And it's just that, uh, it's just that web in between the fingers. Um, so if we're, we kind of have to consider the fingers as starting from like back here rather than up here. And then this fleshy bit is just going to like kind of come along for the ride. Like if this finger is like this and then it were to start curving, curling or you know bending it would come like this and then this fleshy bit would would really kind of fold down hope that makes some sense let's see all right let's start getting on to some more interesting uh interesting shapes or interesting uh hands here we've got that uh wrist bone i'll just kind of block in the the block of the palm. Here we've got the, uh, the sort of meaty thumb section. Here we've got that sort of kind of, both of these are sort of a drumstick or a, or a bowling pin a little bit, but you can see how this then kind of goes into this hollow on the inside of the hand. And we've got the, this section, that lazy B. You know, I mean, when I say that, I mean like, uh, okay, letter B, right? But if it's like a lazy one where we don't even bother to go all the way back. So it's kind of a shape like this. And then uh, fingers, cylinders, curving, And we can kind of see, these pictures are kind of small, so I need to make my pen really small. Um, a little bit of actually like an S-curve shape there. You can, there's a lot of detail to the hands. If you want to get real realistic with it, you can you can find all kinds of like little, little features and little details. Um, for my purposes, I find just dealing with kind of simple C-curves and S-curves, uh, is usually plenty. Whoops. Take a look at uh, what other people. Are we gonna go over the uh, knuckles? Um, we probably will somewhat. Uh, here's some good knuckles right here. Uh, I'll talk about those. Um, now I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. When it comes to the hands, I don't know the anatomy to the depth. Uh, that I do like the the muscle throughout the body. Um, I can't tell you every little thing about uh, about the knuckles and stuff. Um, I learned the hands. Ultimately, I I kind of resolved to treat the hands as like a, a series of lines and blocks. Um, so uh, 
But yeah, do you have a specific question about the Knuckles, or you just want to see what I have to say about it? I just wasn't sure if there was like something like about it because I don't know if it's I don't know if it's everywhere, but I know I think the Knuckles don't line up with that little soft B. I don't know where I heard that. Yeah. Well. Okay. So yeah, let me go back to um to this bit here. Um. Yeah. Like like I said, the the knuckle is kind of like right there. The the knuckles for the whole hand would kind of kind of be like there, 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 and there. Um. So if we're talking about that soft B, uh, here's the crease where the you know the hand is fully extended here so we don't see a lot of the crease but if it would start to curl inward like um you know like this one we start to see that uh that soft b there um but the knuckles will be kind of i guess kind of midway between um the the like uh web there and this this crease and you can kind of see especially on the outside. Um, and like I said, everybody's got kind of a different arrangement of lines here, but I think most people have right about their, uh, their crease uh, starts. But um, yeah, let me go ahead and go to, the, to this hand, because this is some really good knuckle stuff right here. Um, okay, so here's that uh, bone of the... Uh, that wrist bone, that big landmark there. We can also see some tendon and stuff uh, coming off it there. So here's that block of the hand. We've got some flesh coming off on the the uh, heel of the hand side. The knuckles are, you know, tend to be kind of. You can kind of treat them as like a ball, or like a um, maybe like a wheel sort of it depends um they also will kind of tend to taper off on the sides this is you know again i'm I'm teaching cartooning here so i don't tend to go into like real real depth on um specific stuff like this but you can kind of figure out your own shorthand or your own like what you uh what you like uh to do there's also kind of you can do like a like a kite shape kind of for the knuckles. Um, look at that S curve right here. That's pretty cool. And we can really see the, the cylindrical shape of the, the fingers there. We'll go over to this one. And let's see what I can point out. Here we got the uh, we got that bone again. We can see the flesh of the palm a little bit there. The back of the hand tends to be really bony. There's there's really never much flesh um, on the back of the hand. Um, we can see how the middle finger, the knuckle, extends the furthest, and then it's kind of a just like a drop down on either side. This one's, a, I feel, a, a good example of how you can kind of see that double C curve or a C curve turning to an S curve at the end. Obviously, you know, there's more to it than that. We can kind of dig down and like look at a, a bunch of detail, but just for like a nice stylized example or a nice stylized treatment, you can just use those uh, those uh, those lines that we've been talking about. Let's see. Here's another. Look at that. It's beautiful. Just C curve, C curve, S curve. That's all you really need to uh, to define that that finger. Um, here we see since this uh, since this finger is pulling up. Um, we don't see a knuckle there. What we see is this tendon sort of popping up above the knuckle, whereas this middle finger is angling down, so we do see the knuckle there. We got these fleshy... The, the, 
inside of the finger is often just these kind of like overlapping C curves as uh, the flesh kind of folds back on itself. Let's see, here's that bit where the thumb uh, block extends off of the inside. Let's see. All right, here is an interesting, we can kind of, it's an interesting angle. We're gonna to have to puzzle a lot of this out. Um, so the palm, the block of the palm would be kind of like this with the uh, additional block of the thumb coming off that way. And then we get a lot of foreshortening on these, uh, these finger shapes. Like this is a really, foreshortened cylinder. Um, let's see, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back, 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 and I'm gonna change colors on this so that we can see everything separately. So I'm just gonna do the fingers right now. All right, so we could kind of break this block down into like four sections. Um, and we could kind of project these cylinders out from it. But um, no, this is kind of tough. This might be a little beyond what we're trying to do today. But, you know, basically, well, like I said, what I often do is I would just draw these lines for the back of the finger. And then you could kind of just go from there. I don't know if that's uh, going to work for you guys. Um, but like, you know, if I had a palm sort of shape here, I'll kind of pose the fingers like this. And then I you can just sort of fill in the rest of it. That might be a little advanced, I don't know. Um, give it a try though. Let's see, yeah, thumb. All right. That one's tough, this foreshortening. I'm going to do a class on foreshortening later on. Uh, maybe that's for more like uh, for that class. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's do this one. So we've got the wrist. Um, that bone is up here. We don't really see it too much, but it's there. Uh, we got this block. We can see the fleshy heel of the palm coming out there. Um, we can see there's a kind of a straight uh, progression of the knuckles, just straight up to that peak at the at the middle finger, and then it drops for the index finger. So uh, let's see. This is kind of an interesting. If we actually look like closely at this, we see like a an S curve coming down off the knuckle, and then like a little bump for the actual knuckle here, and then another S-curve here. So here we see just the S-curve. We don't really see a, a bump for the knuckle. And then here we see, because these fingers are curving inward, we see the knuckles popping up, a little bit of tendon coming off of them. And then this index finger, since it's curling back toward the back of the hand, we don't see the knuckle. We actually see this just nice long sort of C curve on the back of the hand here. C curve, C curve. Notice how the, the flesh kind of folds there. And then there's kind of that web coming off right there.
Let's see. Okay, I'll do this one. Forearm. There's that uh, that wrist bone. A lot of flesh piling up here, uh, so we don't really see those tendons, but we know they got the tendons in there. We got this kind of chicken drumstick of the heel of the hand. We got this chicken drumstick for the uh, thumb. I'm going to just kind of, I'm stylizing here. Uh, like I said, you know, my, my methods for drawing the hand are largely just based on kind of like stylized lines. And um, the truth is, I don't know how well this is going to work for you guys, but, uh, you know, there's a million people who, who will teach you, you know, other ways. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to teach you my way. We'll see, see how it works. Um, so we got that sort of B shape for those, for the, for that, uh, fleshy part of the, you know, right below the fingers. Let me just go ahead and kind of put some, some lines to start constructing the cylinders of the fingers. Here's that, uh, that web of the, of the thumb attaching to the, uh, to the palm. I'll skip that one for now. Let's see. Okay, here's a good one. This is pretty straightforward. It's a little bit foreshortened, but enough that we can, you know, we can still see all of the uh, pieces. So here's that palm. We can very clearly see that the middle finger is the highest point. We can see that soft B. We can see this fleshy chicken drumstick bulge. We can see this one as well, this block, kind of triangular block coming off the hand. Um, um, some tendons and whatnot coming down into the uh, forearm there. Let's see. Let's try to estimate where the knuckles are. The, the knuckles are probably right about here. I'm going to kind of ghost in a line right there. And so we would see these fingers extending from the, from the knuckles there. And uh, we could kind of, I'm just going to do like some stylized treatment on the fingers here. This like S curve, C curve sort of business that I've been showing you guys works best when you have the fingers kind of going to the side a little bit. If it's straightforward, like this, this one here, doesn't really have any curve to the to one side or other. It's kind of like symmetrical. So we don't really get as much of that sort of that sort of swing to it. But we can still kind of use those design principles of the C curves and S curves to give us some sort of strong lines there. This one I would do like C curve, S curve. Make sure we got the little bulge there. And then this is going to be kind of a, a hollow in the middle of the palm there. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, how about this one? Look at how gnarly this hand is. All kinds of veins and stuff popping up. I'm not going to deal with that right now. Um, I don't actually tend to draw a lot of veins in the hands unless someone's supposed to look like real, real gnarly. Um, okay, we got that, uh, we got that bone there, the, the outside of the wrist bone. We got the uh, palm structure. We got that uh, triangular sort of block coming off the side for the thumb. And look at this, this, this thumb here almost is almost like a pure C curve. We could probably get away with just drawing one C curve there, although probably we want to break it down into two so we get a little bit of a knuckle there. This is kind of a cool S curve here. Um, 
because of the foreshortening of this hand, uh, we actually see the the middle finger knuckle looking like it's even like a little bit behind the middle finger knuckle. That's because it's kind of on top like this. So it's kind of like moving back in perspective. Um, let's just go ahead and just do all of these C curve, S curve lines here. And then uh, notice you've got these, uh, you can really see it here, the, the web. The finger bones, you know, you can see this shadowy hollow here um, where, you know, the, the knuckles are back here and the fingers really come from back there, but there's this web that extends uh, on the palm side. Alrighty, let's see. Okay, we're almost almost out of time. I don't like to go too much more than an hour, so let me just get like one or two more in here. Let me find some good ones. Oh, I put that one here twice. All right. These ones are good. Look at that bone popping up here. That's super, super important. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll do like one more uh, reference study and then I'll just draw a couple of hands freehand. Um, Remember that the the wrist is kind of a blocky structure. Here we see that palm comes down here. We've got that fleshy area of the palm. You can even see kind of, to me, you can see that right around here where it translates or it transitions from this bony uh, tendinous kind of stuff on the top to like you can see it start to bulge out right there which is kind of cool. Um, we got those knuckles. C curves, S curves. And I freely admit this is a cheat, but it's a good cheat. And it's, it's honestly like when I'm drawing comics and stuff, this is like all I ever do. Uh, you know, if you want to do, um, really detailed like academic figure drawing or something you know depending on your style you may need to go more in depth and really uh dig into the every little detail of the hands and you know the rest of the body and, and whatever um but to me uh you can get a law you can go a long way with just kind of understanding from like a design perspective the way this stuff works All right, so um, do one more here. Here we see, this is kind of cool. We can see, I'll block this in, the whole like block of the palm. And then we can really see the, um, this uh, thumb block coming off, but it's kind of coming down here to where this area is all in shadow. So it gives us an interesting uh, kind of perspective on that. And I'll just do basic C curve, C curve, S curve. Um, again, when the fingers are curled inward, we see the knuckle. But when they're curving back, we don't see the knuckle. We start to see this tendon here pop up. C curve, S curve, S curve. All right, um, so I think that'll do it for uh, the reference. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple more uh, hands freehand. Um, and uh, if you guys, you know, as always, if you have any questions, feel free. Here's the bony wrist. Um, Lock in the, the palm or the, yeah, the palm structure a little bit.
And like I said, when I draw the fingers, uh, you know, it, uh, typically I'll just kind of do that back of the finger and use these C curve, S curve tricks. Kind of can work the same for the thumb. Make sure I put in a little bit of a web there. Right. Let's see. Wrist. Thumb structure coming off there. It's like a little, little curve to the to the base of the thumb there, and then the base of that uh, thumb mass, and then one two one two for the thumb itself. That soft B there. And here, because the knuckles are actually back here somewhere, I'm going to have to just estimate. Finish off those fingers. That one didn't come out great. Oh well. It's not too bad. I could whip that into shape. Um, oh, let's do a fist. Okay. Fists are cool. If you draw comic books, you probably, at least, at least the kind, kind of comic books I usually draw, you end up drawing a lot of fists. Um, so let me show you. I'll show you some cool tricks. I like to start by like just putting in the knuckles which will be often just this little like squiggle one two you got the index and then middle finger the big one these little ones here and then you kind of let these s curves roll off it uh, mass of the the, the thumb around the, the base usually in a fist the index finger is going to be jutting out a little bit that's not so great Oh well. All right, let me see. Uh, one more. I'll just do a flat, like back of the hand. There's that, uh, that uh, palm structure, the uh, thumb structure kind of hanging off the side. On this side, it comes to about halfway, I feel. And then the web kind of area comes to about like two thirds of the palm. And then let's see, the knuckles will be here. And then fingers on. Thumb. And we might have some tendons kind of reaching back. Um, and they'll, ju they'll just follow, like if, the, uh, if this is the palm, um, and the fingers are coming off like this, then those tendons and whatnot will just kind of reach back straight like this, like straight back. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's getting late. So that'll about do it. Um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I uh, freely acknowledge that my methods for drawing the heads, hands, and feet um, are 
maybe a little unorthodox. Uh, but like I said, um, there's a whole lot of people out there uh, that will teach you the, um, the more traditional ways. Uh, so uh, hopefully I can show you guys something a little bit different. Um, this is what I use, this is what works for me. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys can uh, get something out of it. Uh, so that'll do it. Um, homework, I want you guys to give me 20 hands. Uh, they don't have to be real detailed, um, but just try to like work that structure. Uh, just, you know, put in the palm, the, you know, obviously put in everything, but, um, you know, that palm block, that, uh, that thumb block, uh, the fingers, try to, try to use the S curves and the C curves, um, different poses. You can work from reference or without reference, uh, probably both is ideal. Do some with and then try to do some without. Um, and then post it in the channel. Um, so uh, thank you guys very much for coming to class and I will see you all next week. All right. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one.